I think being a curator is like being a detective and that's what I love best about it. I love solving mysteries and I love looking for evidence and museum collections offer you that in spades. Camborne Museum occupied the upstairs of the Passmore Edwards Public Free Library from 1913 to 2005. Then the museum closed and all of its collections were moved here to Helston at the Museum of Cornish Life. The Camborne collection is full of interesting antiquities and objects from Cornwall and from outside Britain, including archaeology, ethnography, social history and geology. They show how much our understanding of the past and other cultures and how they're presented in museums has changed from being quite naive to being much more informed and appreciative. When Camborne Museum closed in 2005, all of its collections were transferred to Helston. With the collections came the old museum registers and index cards. We are now using these registers and cards to cross-reference, locate and research objects and prepare them for the next stages of their journey. We're finding out new information all the time. For example, this wonderful object is called a death's head and snake. Digging deeper into the oldest registers, we found out that rather than something exotic from faraway lands or a faraway time in the past, this was actually cast at Hale Foundry, very locally to Camborne. After the collections arrived here in Helston, most of them remained in storage in boxes, but some very special objects went on display straight away. And one of these was known as Trevithick's walking stick. It has the initials RT on it. However, through our research, we found that this is not a walking stick. It is far too long and it is much more likely to have been a horse measuring stick. And although Richard Trevithick, uh, that great Cornish engineer, was known for being very strong and taller than average for the time, this is too long to use as a walking stick. But we like the story around it anyway. One of the most significant parts of the Camborne collection is the archaeology, particularly the incredible Romano-British site of Maygall Villa, with its sophisticated mosaic floor, of which we have a small fragment on display. Within the collection, these personal effects from Camborne miners working deep underground in huge copper and tin mines, such as at Dole Coath, are, I think, among the most poignant in the collections. Many contain the imprints of people's hands and heads, the miner's hat, the candles, the black powder canteen used as explosives underground. And we hope someday some of these may be appreciated back in their hometown or nearby. The collection also has some artefacts donated by prominent collectors and donors. James Thomas was probably the most important amongst these. Indeed, it was his initial donations of hundreds of archaeological objects that created the museum in the first place. But James Thomas was also a maker. He made miniature models out of concrete of the many ancient and medieval Celtic crosses that he found in his travels as a rural postman. He died in 1933, and on his grave he is described as the first bard in a thousand years. Another prominent collector and donor to the Camborne collection was the Reverend Canon J. Sims Carra. He was also the vicar of Holy Trinity Church at Penn Ponds. An antiquarian who fancied himself as a bit of a Lawrence of Arabia, he also collected ancient Greek, Roman and Jewish antiquities, some of which came to Camborne Museum and many of which we're still trying to locate. The collection has been largely hidden under the eaves here at our museum until about 2019, when Julia Webb Harvey and Tamsin Chaffin began investigating the collections and specifically their provenance and donors. 
As we complete researching these wonderful collections, our hope is to continue working with the town of Camborne to create new exhibitions, both here at the Museum of Cornish Live and back in their hometown. <laughs> <laughs>